be a part of our series Ministries in Focus, and we want to get right into it. We are aware, of course, that ICT, which is Information and Communication Technology, is one of the pillars of the new economy in St. Kitts and Nevis. We've heard the Prime Minister speak about that a lot. You can say that the home of ICT in St. Kitts and Nevis would be the ICT Centre. It has been closed for some time now. What can you tell us about that? The ICT Centre was closed because there was a leak that created a proliferation of mold at the ICT Centre. And we felt as though that the safety of our employees and the safety of our clients uh, were paramount. And so we had to close the, the ICT Centre. In the meantime, we have been re relocated on the top floor of the cable building. But apart from that, um, let me say that work has been has been started. As a matter of fact, the public works have done their the assessment, and they're looking at the most suitable and permanent solution that could be ahead of the the ICT center. Mm -hmm. So, is there any specific timeline as to when it will be reopened? Well, we're looking at sometime this year. Okay. Like I said, we have to revamp the entire roof. That is one of the uh, recommendations. There are several recommendations that was made. We have to find the, the most suitable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the ICT Centre, of course, has a reputation for being the training hub um, for ICT here in St. Kitts and Nevis. And when it first opened, it had an impressive record of training persons, locals, of course, in information software such as Microsoft Word and Excel. But more so, under your leadership, it took on a more specialized training in the sense that we saw like webmaster training and stuff. Tell us a bit about that strategy. When it started first, um, we can say we were in the introductory stage of teaching persons, beginners courses, Excel, Word, etc. However, the needs of the Federation at this time in terms of um, our people is more intense. And what we're trying to achieve, and you, you mentioned webmasters, also mobile apps. Um, these are things that we think are the future of our people and also part of the entrepreneurial um, spirit going forward in terms of people acquiring certain jobs and m being a pillar of ICT development within the Federation and the world over. It's important that young persons get involved in ICT technology and we saw the introduction, of course, of the one-to-one -one laptop project whereby every high school student is given a <coughs> laptop to use. How would you say that has been progressing? I think it has been progressing quite nicely. I must say also, not because I said quite nicely, we also have our thoughts. It's the first time we have introduced it. And so the, in hindsight, yes, we have made some errors. However, they're not insurmountable that cannot be corrected. Um, what we have done also in terms of the laptop program is that we have instituted what we call an educational network, what are uh, EduNet. This network will interconnect all of our high schools, all our secondary high schools within the Federation, including Nevis. Um, so they have their own network. So when the student goes to school, now he has access. No matter where he or she is on campus, they would have access to the internet and also higher learning and be able to research at the same time. Mm -hmm. We well, speak specifically about EduNet because I understand that there are some specific benefits that have to be derived. You just hinted at some of them, but I know an exciting prospect would be, say, the teleconferencing that would allow students to link with each other across schools. It, it's not just teleconferencing. Um, you have what you had call web conferencing and all those different features. And the reason why we have done that also, it would be easier, just think about it from this standpoint, that if a teacher is absent, let's suppose in virtual high, okay. um, a math teacher, Maybe you can get a math teacher from Sandy Point High or wherever um, in the Federation to teach a class using some of the um, solutions that are based on the EduNet. Edu mm -hmm. So the EduNet basically, as you mentioned, it provides Wi-Fi coverage to the school. Yes. Um, how does that work when a student leaves the school? Because the network is basically on school grounds, then they would lose coverage. What we're negotiating at this point in time, though, with um, a couple of the providers here, that we can 
um, install what we call dongles, especially now that we have realized there's a move to 4G next generation solution here on the island. What we are trying to do at this point is to negotiate with the relevant providers so that they can provide dongles for those students who do not have um, internet at their home mm -hmm. to be able to have access during the time they're home so that they can do their homework. Mm -hmm. And just for those who may not be tech savvy, explain what a dongle is. A dongle is just a transmitter which will um, help you to acquire um, wireless signals. Mm -hmm. And so when can we see, expect to see the edge net up and running? Well, the edge net, we're in the last stage of, it, stage of um, verification. We have to make sure that um, what we wanted as, um, as the government, what we wanted in terms of um, the network is what we got. So we are doing verification and we are looking at the, the next semester after the, the holidays that the network will be launched. So basically after the Easter break after the students for them? Yes. Okay. Chief concern that persons would have, of course, is the type of access um, to the websites that is that some of the students may have to. Is that built in? There are safeguards built in to ensure that students use the laptops and the Wi-Fi, the internet aspect of the Wi-Fi, in the productive way that it is meant? Well, yes, and we have to be careful also um, in terms of filtering because I do not want to go too technical, of course, but in terms of sometimes when you filter or try to filter out some sites, then you affect legitimate sites at times based on the code in which they have been written. And so these are things that we're looking at. Um, of course, they will be filtered. Um, a matter of fact, one of the school of thought also is to look at some of those, um, what we call bandwidth hogs, maybe some of the social media sites, mm -hmm. if we are going to restrict those. Um, a decision have not been made in terms of that. Of course, we have to work with the education department in order to put a policy forward. As an IT department, we do not want to exclude education department. They will have to tell us exactly what they want and we will implement it. Mm -hmm. Minister, as we refer back to the laptop project, the one-to-one -one laptop project, we mentioned that the students who were, most of them were given their laptops, I think. There are some already acquired for those who are going to be in first form um, mm -hmm. coming up. But what about the teachers? When we first started with the, the, the laptop program, there was a school of thought that we would have distributed to the teachers according to the departments. So we gave out account to the departments within um, the required schools. We have since changed that um, policy and now we are looking to give every single teacher a laptop. And that's important, why in your view? The thing is, speaking with education department and the Minister of Education, um, Honorable Nigel Carty, one of the things you do not want is that within a specific department they may have let's say two or three different courses going on at the same time. However, you have two laptops that are assigned mm -hmm. to those teachers when you have four teachers doing something. And so what we intend to do is that every single teacher, because again, in terms of the preparedness of a text and all those things, I think they would need their, 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 their laptop, individual laptop. Right. And you referred earlier to the mobile application development workshop, which took place um, early last year. Mm -hmm. Remind viewers about that and the success that it had. I think that it was of great success, especially um, from the standpoint that this was the first time they've done it. And we started with 75 persons. Mm -hmm. A matter of fact, uh, we had had so many persons that we had to cut off, really. However, um, we're now in negotiating to do a second phase. However, we want to do it more in the high schools so that because I have, got, I have gotten word, for example, that CXC mm -hmm. will be introducing um, an app development program. However, we can't wait here in St. Kitts until CXC. We have to jumpstart that process here and for our citizens and our students in schools to be able to address those issues and be able to be a part of the development of a more broader solution. So you would say it's, again, another example of saying it's a need is leading from the front, so to speak, in, uh, across the region. Yes, we have. And ironically, uh, you said that I was, um, I remember we developed an app here called Dodge the Potholes. Mm -hmm. And I went to a, a, a meeting, I think it was in Trinidad, and ironically, 
there was a minister of telecommunications. Six months after we developed that lab, that um, app here, mm -hmm. Sankis boasting that he had done that. Mm. They had done that in a different island. Part of our problem, quite frankly, um, is how we disseminate information. We are doing a lot of good things um, within the IT department, but sometimes it flies under the radar. And so we have developed, we are now developing systems how to get that information out. Mm -hmm. And certainly and a, info, a program like this is, is going to help, and that is why we're so happy to have you. Now, Minister, as we talk about making our people more savvy, we expect to see a generation of more local content. Mm -hmm. And in order to facilitate that, government acquired um, an IXP, which is an internet exchange uh, protocol device, and also a DNS um, router. Mm -hmm. Explain again, for those who may not be tech savvy, basically what those systems are designed to do and how it will assist the government in moving forward its agenda of IT. Well, in terms of going into the real gymnastics, uh, let me try and explain it as simple as, as I can. IXP is basically what we call an internet exchange point. And what that is really designed to do is for you to generate more local content and share it among your citizens. Now, as we speak, if I needed to um, send you an email from where we are sitting, that request has to go to America and come back to you. Mm -hmm. And if you respond, it goes back to America and comes to me. Now, what the IX will do, instead of going off island, it will come directly to you. Not only that, it's very good for national preparedness because if something, God forbid, something had to happen in the America and the Americas where those hubs are, then we will definitely face a national crisis and we will not be able to communicate amongst ourselves. So what this is basically doing, one, it will cut down on some of the costs because there's a cost for it to go to that information going to the U.S. so it will be able to um, reduce the cost of... Um, transacting mm -hmm. um, using the, the, the internet and so these are things that we think that are very important for all like I said national preparedness but not only that um, the overall proliferation of um, ICT development here um, within the, the, the Federation and you could think of it as another issue uh, for example um, let's look at file sharing mm -hmm. people who share music P2P file sharing. Um, if you do a search, let's say for Element, mm -hmm. then that request still has to go to America. This search is servers outside of St. Kitts. What you'll do now, instead of making that request, going to the, the Americas, it will do it locally. A search locally for that content. If it's not available here locally, then use the other alternative. And that would help, of course, with security and privacy issues? Of course, in terms of security, yes, it definitely enhance security. And the DNS router? Well, the DNS, the DNS router is almost similar. We have installed one here late last year, and we have used, I think we're working closely with Packet Clearinghouse, and there was a consultant by the name of um, Bevel Wooden, right. who we have worked um, extremely closely with. As a matter of fact, he is one of the foremost experts in this region within the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so we're working closely to get that done. Okay. Minister, let's sh switch gears a bit now and <coughs> talk a bit about government's um, strategy of keeping the public informed. You referred earlier to it mm -hmm. with regards to helping to disseminate information better. And a large part of it, particularly in communicating with young persons, of course, is the internet. A lot of persons go on the website to seek information. Gov.kn. I think is a critical part of government strategy in communicating with the public, not just at home. Yes, um, what the dot can, can was basically designed to do. Um, the fact that we had so many different um, government institutions having their own website, what we did is we, we, we created what we call a government portal so that you bring as many government websites together in, and on one site. And so if you want to, for example, visit Inland Revenue, gone are the days that you have to go on Inland Revenue site, and, or you want to go to the Prime Minister's office, for example, um, you have to go on a different site. Now we have all those are consolidated into one site. And so it's easier now for an investor 
in terms of doing business here in St. Kitts are finding out about the government, what is actually happening in government. They can ease, instead of searching the web um, sporadically, mm -hmm. you have this one site that is dedicated for government use to disseminate information, like you said, not only for our local, but the diaspora and the investor. Mm -hmm. And you launched it last year in Parliament. How would you say that it has grown since then? It has grown tremendously. We have seen several thousand hits, so which means that persons are really paying attention to what is happening. It also shows the transparency of the government, which is very important to us at this point in time. And so I can say that it has grown from leaps to blues and bounds. Mm -hmm. And of course, an important part of it would be the e-government aspect where persons can go on and download forms and um, no longer would they have to say, if I'm overseas and I need to get a passport form, mm -hmm. um, I don't have to get come to St. Kitts or have somebody send it to me via mail. I can now download it straight from um, the website there. Well, yes, um, we have done that. There are several forms and applications that are on this site. Not only that, what is very um, interesting also is that if someone is overseas, for example, and they need to assist someone in their family who have a, an account of some sort, whether it's housing or whatever, mm -hmm. with the government, they can now transact over the Internet um, on this site. And so it, it has become extremely dynamic. Um, which we are proud of. Um, the thing is, it is to keep up with the information. Right, and which I is actually, a lot of information that I we have to process. I actually was just going to ask you about that because, of course, updating the website with current information very important. Mm -hmm. um, what strategies are in place to get that done? Well, of course, we have worked with our um, SKNS um, to to really assist us in terms of getting some of this information out or keeping us relevant in terms of and other. Um, departments which we, we call to find out exactly what is happening so that we can keep the, the, the information fresh and relevant in the minds of our citizens and persons abroad. Uh, Minister, speaking of transparency in government, of course mm -hmm. there is collaboration with some of the more regional, more popular regional agencies and one of them that I want to bring to your attention and to the public's attention of course is EGRIP, which is an OECS project. It stands basically for the Electronic Government Regional Integration Project. Mm -hmm. Tell the persons, Minister Philip, um, how the government is working with eGrip and how it's going to impact their lives as an ordinary citizen on the street of St. Kitts and Nevis. What the eGrip is really about is for um, persons, within, not persons, but governments or territories within the OECS Union um, come together and in terms of best practices and the um, IT methodology come together. And what it really does, it helped us to consolidate our buying power. For example, um, in terms of equipment, we, instead of us um, going in as Senkets alone, we go in as an OECS and it reduces price and, we get, and also assist us also in some of the le legislative agenda in terms of IT, Look, of course looking at best practices and looking at um, the fact that IT is relatively new in terms of the, legis the legislative process to really assist us in that regard and to put a new legislation forward in terms of um, the Telecommunications Act, the Telecommunications Bill and all those different things for us to move ahead so that persons do not use the internet as um, a device to harm persons in terms of theft or doing um, transactions that are not um, suitable. I mean, so of course, there is also in terms of some of the strategies that government is using, a wide area network which is co referred to as a G1. Mm -hmm. Explain to the public about that as well. Well, the G1 is something that when, first of all, when I came into government, one of the things that we have realized is that the, the government network, in my view, was a huge jigsaw puzzle. And so what the G1 really is, a gov what we call a government-wide area networks, what it do is connect government, connect every single ministry, every department as one entity, so that at least you can reduce costs for example, across the network and improve uh, on the efficiency, whether it's um, the internet, mm -hmm. whether it's um, your, your, your voice calls or what have you. So 
It, uh, what we're trying to do, like I said before, is to establish government as, a one, as, as one entity instead of having different networks across government, which does make sense and have one government. Now, we're not asking necessarily <coughs> for specifics in terms of numbers, but how much would you say has been saved since this inf information, this G1, has been um, implemented? We have realized cost savings. So not only that, what we have done, um, we have found in, in, in several instances where there was you no know, uniformity, even within the billing structure within government. And that was something that we had to address early. And I, I could say, I can say to you that we have saved hundreds of thousands of dollars per year just implementing that, that system and also putting in a new PBX here at government headquarters. What, we'll, what that will do also, we are thinking about going into VoIP services, voice over internet, um, protocol. A, a, a internet protocol. And so that is what we are trying to achieve. We want to modernize government. Um, in some respects, make, make government a paperless government and transact a lot of your information using the machines that you have on your desk. Right. Minister, any final comments that you'd like to leave the public with? Well, um, what I'll say at this point in terms of IT, um, all of us have to be on board. It's a wave of the future. Um, and that is why the ICT department and the Ministry of Technology is so critical at this point in time because, like I said, we, when we started from the top of this interview, we have changed the focus from a beginner's program in terms of courses. We have realized that the colleges, the high school, they are doing that. What we are doing now is to establish a process where we can be more advanced and our people can use some of these tools that have been created or been taught to the advantage of developing ICT within the community, within the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. So a lot has been done, but still, we still have a long way to go. Well, we still have a long because IT is an ever-changing um, issue. And that is something that we want to keep, we want our citizens to keep abreast of technology, not just being end users. Because if you look at it also, um, what we have seen in terms of um, penetration rates, our broadband penetration rate is one of the highest in the Caribbean. I think it's about 40%. Our, in, our, mobile, our mobile penetration rate is well over well, last time I saw it was 154%. And so we have the capacity, our people have the tools in their hands. It's a matter of how they use them and how they can use them in an effective manner for them to be productive citizens. Okay. Minister responsible for technology, Honorable Glenn Phillips, thank you very much for joining us today, sir. No problem.